what's going on guys so it has gotten very cold this past week we even had a little bit of snow um, temperatures have been nice and frosty it's been more winter than it has been fall for me here in Colorado Springs and this rotation kind of reflects that a lot of stuff that I like to wear when it's nice and crispy and cold outside have made the rotation some newer stuff to the collection is in here some stuff that has just you know <laughs> really captured my senses to say the very least and we're going to discuss those here in just a little bit it's week number 154 in the weekly rotation so stay tuned <laughs> Starting off on Sunday is one that I kind of strictly wear in the cold. It's that time of year. It is the best smelling plum fragrance on the planet, in my opinion. It is Central Obsessions version of Bond Number no. Nine's Andy Warhol. This is my newer bottle. I have an older bottle, a few years older than this one. It's got a little bit bigger of a dent than this. So good. Plum and oud. It can be simplified down to that. Plum and oud. The main things you're going to smell. Gorgeous strong sillage, crazy long lasting, dense, projects pretty heavy early on. It's a powerful beastly fragrance. It smells absolutely amazing. Plum and oud, you wouldn't think it would be a great combination. There's other things going on here. It's a little ambery. It's got some woody facets, some spices as well, but that's the main things that stand out and start to finish. I get the plum sweetness the whole time. I get that light, light little bit of oud funk the whole way through. Just a gorgeous fragrance. Like I said, I love wearing this one in the cold because it cuts through the cold very, very well. During the day, Essential Obsessions version of Bond Number no. 9's Andy Warhol. Then we got the shower. Went for something nice and fresh after being dense and sweet all day long. Ferrari's Radiant Bergamot. A weekly rotation favorite at this point for quite a while now. I, I rock this one on a regular basis. It loses prime there's a little air leak but you can see that juice level continuously dropping i spray it anywhere from four to eight times every time i wear it out the shower it's just a delightful scent zesty green citrus a little bitter from the bergamot then you have some fresh herbal green tones as well without it making it spicy green in any way just bright fresh zesty and green it's literally that simple it smells that damn good too love 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 this stuff out the shower ferrari radiant bergamot Moving into Monday, this is one of the newest creations from my buddy Michael Dinsmore over at Making Sense. It's his version of the first iris fragrance to ever capture me, to make me want to explore iris more. The soapy floral office king as it's known. This is Making Sense version of Prada Lome. This is called Making Sense Iris Man. It's not as bright in the opening because it's a higher oil concentration. This is a pure parfum, an extract of parfum. So it's above 25%, but it captures all of that soapy neroli iris combo, the spices, the pepper, the cardamom, all that good stuff. That little bit of an ambery feel. It's, it's pretty much spot on. Like I'm, I'm really impressed with how well he actually cloned this. The quality seems to be spot on. Like it smells like almost a one-to-one -one copy. I'm not gonna call it exactly a one-to-one -one copy because can anything really be? But I would say this is as close as it's gonna get. I've never smelled another Prada Lome clone, but I mean, blind sniff test, I don't know how easy it would be to tell the difference between the two, between the original one and this one. I did in my video have it on one on this wrist, one on that wrist of the original versus this. And that's the only thing I can come up with is the original is much brighter in the top because it's a much lower oil concentration. So it's much more volatile. So once it's atomized, it really opens up and bright and airy, whereas this is a bit more dense. So it sits a little bit closer. It's not as bright, but it lasts forever. God, he did, Mike did such a good job on this. If you were looking for long lasting Prada Lome, Making Sense Iris Man is what you've been looking for. Then when I got out the shower, it was time for a good shave, so I busted out my Zaharoff Signature Citrine Shave Set. It's the splash, and of course, I gave myself several sprays of the fragrance. Warm, sweet orange and clementine. Just so beautiful. God, it's such a good scent profile. I get a lot of incense. On my skin, the incense really comes out from the base notes. A lot of amber and incense. Very warm orange smell. That's the easiest way to describe this. Gorgeous fresh fragrance with a lot of depth and character at the same time. Just really dig this one. I keep going back to it no matter what time of year. It's really meant for the heat, but I'll tell you what, just lounging around, especially when layering with the shaving set. 
It's an enjoyable scent profile. Out the shower, had a good shave. Was a Horoff Signature Citrine. Moving into Tuesday, even though this is a little bit fresher and probably not the most ideal of choices for the cooler weather, in this particular line, it's probably the least ideal, to be honest with you. Uh, this was one of the warmer days, and when I say warmer, I mean like high 50s. It was kind of the warmest weather I've had in the last week. So I went with Emporio Ormani's Stronger With You Freeze. This is the most versatile in line, hands down, bar none. You get all of the enjoyment of the EDT, the original, without all the warmth. It's not as dense and spicy. It's more fresh, bright, a little sweet and spicy. It's very fresh fragrance overall. The longevity is still there. It's still got some pretty good longevity, six, seven, eight hour range type of thing, more seven to eight hours. Really sticks to my skin for being as fresh as it is because there's a lot of deeper notes in here as well. It gets touted for not having as much character, which I can attest to. I can say if you compare it to all of the others in the line minus Stronger With You Only, which I think is not as good as this, but kind of replace this. This was better, just being honest. But all the deeper ones, the absolute, the intensely, the leather, I haven't tried the oud yet, but all the different darker flankers, including the Eau de Toilette original, so much more warm, spicy, chestnut. They all have their different characters. You got one with leather, one that's very sweet, has more toffee kind of stuff going on for it. Like there's a lot going on with the flankers and this one is more simplistic overall, but I'll be damned if it's not a joy to wear. Super versatile. It works in the warm weather. It works in the cold weather. Crisp fall weather, which was what I had the day I wore this. It's absolutely ideal. You haven't tried this one out yet? I think you're doing yourself a disservice. During the day, Stronger With You freeze. Really good stuff. Then we got the shower. I just talked about this one in a cheap fragrance video, and I was in the mood to wear it. It was magnificent. It's been a little while since I've worn it. CK1 Shock. Some people don't care for this, that's fine. I like it. This is my second bottle, it's about halfway gone. I've had this bottle for several years now. I love this stuff. I kind of strictly wear it in the winter. It's got this moist tobacco smell to it. There's a little bit of orangey citrus, like a tangerine note or something like that at the top. There's some woods, there's some herbs, but it's mostly about this moist, sweet, and slightly warm tobacco. It's fresh at the top, warms up and gets creamy as it dries. It's not the most challenging of fragrances out there, don't get me wrong. It's actually a great starter tobacco scent to believe, to be honest with you. It's kind of what I've dubbed it early on in my channel was this is a good way to dip your toe into tobacco because you do get a nice moist tobacco note in here. Um, but no matter how big my collection gets, no, how, no matter how many fragrances I get my nose on and expand my palate, I still enjoy this one for as simplistic as it is. It's just really good stuff. Great for the winter too. 20 bucks is hard to beat. Out the shower, CK1 shock. Moving into Wednesday, one of the most polarizing yet popular cheap fragrance clones on the market. I went with Club de Nuit Intense Man, the original Eau de Toilette from Armoff. Haven't worn it in a while. I've mainly been spending time with the limited edition parfum. Admittedly, I prefer that version to this one, but this is still good. Had somebody in the comments, because I recently did a Is It Still Good video a few days ago on this one. I was inspired to do so and talk about it because I was wearing it. Had somebody say he bought it on Amazon and wasn't expecting it to smell so cheap. Doesn't understand all the hype. It smells very unnatural, was what he said. And I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say that this fragrance even remotely smelled natural. I know the way I've described it is it's harsh and synthetic chemically synthetic in the top so I don't know who steered you wrong my friend but I don't really know of anybody saying there was a chance at this $30 fragrance smelling natural it definitely smells cheap and synthetic but damn it it's enjoyable it pulls compliments and notoriously for so many different people I've heard it from so many different people online and that's been my experience not every time but often my wife loves how it smells too she couldn't wait to tell me how good I smelled as soon as she got a whiff because it's a very familiar scent profile to her Cheap and synthetic, but still does the trick. It's smoky magic. This is the loudest version of Club Day Weed Intense Man. It's the lightest oil concentration. It's the most bright and volatile. It projects the heaviest and you still get great longevity. It's worth the experience for 30 bucks in my opinion. During the day, the all-time polarizing 
classic, I guess you could say. Club de Nuit Intense Man, the Eau de Toilette. And then we got the shower, one of the most pivotal fragrances in my journey. Kind of a turning point fragrance is kind of what I dubbed it in the early 2000s for me. It was Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, the original. It's my little 40 ml, not my first bottle, obviously. But I go back to it randomly from time to time. It's one of my favorite scent profiles ever created. Such a good one. I still say, of all the versions of light blue that have come out, it's still the best smelling one. The original light blue is still the best smelling one to me. Compliment King in its own right, hype beast of its time. They've sold countless bottles of this. There's still guys that this is their signature scent to this day. And I don't blame you fellas. If this is all you wear, go ahead with your bad self because this is an amazing fragrance. People idealize what performance used to be though i don't recall it being the strongest fragrance of all time back then but i still get decent performance now four five six hours more in that five six hour range for as fresh as it is that's kind of kind of what i would expect from a fragrance of this freshness so i get decent performance out of it i'm happy with it i love the way it smells and i wore it out the shower dolce gabbana light blue moving into thursday for as much of a cooling effect as this fragrance has it's milky it's creamy it's almond it has a little bit of a cooling effect this almost iciness to it in the opening this cold opening gorgeous fragrance that does not get talked about enough parfums de marley pegasus i have not wore this in some time i do believe the exclusive is the superior version it's a little bit darker a little bit more animalic has a little bit of oud in it but this is still a great fragrance in its own right. They have cheaper clones out there. I get it. But I'll tell you what. The quality of this one is just... It's its fantastic. It's milky. It's creamy. It's sweet. It's a little powdery and floral. It's, it's beautiful. It really is. There's that cold... It's got a cold nature to the scent when you smell it. It's actually cooling when you when it hits your nose. It's hard, it's, it's strange to say, but when you smell it, when you get it on skin and smell it, you completely get where I'm coming from with this. Beast in performance. Another one, pulls in a lot of compliments. Wife's a big fan of this one. I haven't worn it in some time. And that's, that was literally my thought process. I was deciding what to wear. I said, you know what? I haven't worn Pegasus in at least a year. I'm wearing Pegasus today, damn it. And I was glad I did. I enjoyed every second of it. Five sprays, went all day long, smelled my sillage all day long, because like I said, it's an outright beast during the day. Parfums de Marley Pegasus. Doesn't get enough love anymore, guys. Shame on all of us. And then we got the shower. Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct together. One of my favorite cheap fragrances ever created. I love this stuff. It's easy to keep going back to, because I love how it smells. Really do. It's cheap and synthetic smelling, but it smells great to me. And it's actually pretty strong for about an hour and a half to two hours off my skin. Like, I just did three sprays out the shower this particular night, three or four sprays, and uh, I smelled myself pretty easily for about two hours, and then it kind of faded to the background where it was close to the skin. But YSLY meets the original First Instinct meets Invictus Aqua. I've said it before. Those of you that have heard me talk about this before, I sound like a broken record, I'm sure. Because it's been featured a lot on my channel. Because I wear this a good bit. You can see the dent. Love this stuff. Out the shower. Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct together. Moving into Friday is a brand new release that will be coming out in the next few days from a familiar brand as far as the wet shaving and beard product community, Sphinx Beard. Well, now they have a subcategory brand called Sphinx Fragrances. This is Black Anibus. This is my favorite of the six releases coming. I just did a full house collection, in-depth kind of first impressions, sniff and rate. Just, I was blown away by this one. Such a believable and juicy grapefruit in the top that settles into this dry pencil shaving, wood, leathery, just, it's so good. God, this is so good. I gave this one a 9 out of 10, just to give you a heads up on where my headspace was. And I don't just doll out 9 out of 10s to any and every fragrance that I like. I really, really love this fragrance. It's so good. Spray that again in the air. God, this is good. And I only sprayed three sprays because I was wearing a hoodie like I am now. When I wear hoodies, I like to wear stronger fragrances because I'm wearing less sprays. I wore three sprays. 
was smelling my sillage all day long every time I made a move forward, backwards, sideways, turning, whatever. This is the one to try. From what Mohammed told me, there's definitely going to be samples available early, right away. So definitely get a sample and try this one. There's others that were fantastic from the house, especially Heavenly Lilies. I actually gave that a 9.5 out of 10. That is gardenia. That is tuberose. It's sweet. There's almonds. It is fantastic. I was blown away. My wife was blown away. Loves that fragrance. 9.5 out of 10 for Heavenly Lilies. So that is the most banger of the six in the collection this one's just a half a tick lower this is more for guys this is a bit more masculine it's more oud based little leathery type of feel it's dry and woody but still has this brightness this juicy grapefruit that starts you off early on in the fragrance just gorgeous i'm telling you guys if y'all if you have a similar taste to me you'll like this one this will be the one for you from the house during the day sphinx fragrances black anibis then we got the shower you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Two nights in a row. Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct together. I mean, I enjoyed it, enjoyed it so much the previous night. It was already sitting right there. I said, why not? Just grab the bottle, sprayed, and went on about my night. Two nights in a row. Out the shower. Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct together. Finally, on Saturday, today, it's actually the evening. I already took my shower. Chilling. It's nice and cold outside. Spent a little time outdoors tonight, enjoying this crisp, cold air. And I mean, it's freaking cold tonight. During the day, it was quite cold too. So I went with my new bottle from Killer Oud, Paris Corner, called Death by Oud. The Oud is much more prominent as it dries on your skin than I initially thought in the first impressions review that I did. I don't really get much grapefruit here. The lavender I do get. It does add a little bit of a soapy brightness to this fragrance, but it's mostly and I don't know what's creating the smoky tone because it's a very smoky fragrance. Whether it's the leather, the tobacco, the oud, there's amber in here as well, there's spices. The mid and the base of this fragrance, the note breakdown that I showed from the Amazon listing from Aroma Concepts where I purchased this fragrance on Amazon, I get everything in the heart and dry down. I don't really get any, I can't tell that there's grapefruit, supposedly like grapefruit and lavender, I believe. I get the lavender. I don't get citrus, but it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant because this fragrance is fantastic. It's supposed to be a clone of Chopard Oud Malaki. I've never tried that one. If this is a clone of that, that's an amazing fragrance too. I know going into it that I would love it because I love this. I did five sprays. It was plenty. I had a nice sillage. It's not an absolute beast, but it is on the stronger side. I would say it's very good across the board with longevity, projection, and sillage, but not quite a beast. I paid 55 bucks for it. I, it was worth every single dollar. I don't feel like I should have shopped around and got it even cheaper. I'm sure there's somewhere in the corners of the internet you can get a few dollars cheaper, but I feel like 55 bucks is very fair for this fragrance. Beyond fair, honestly. It's straight up affordable, bordering cheapy, and I don't feel like I was wearing a cheap fragrance at friggin' all. I think next I'm going to be trying... Killer Oud Ethic, which there is their version of Amouage Epic Man, because that's one of my favorite fragrances, and I'd love to compare the two, but I'm getting off topic, but I really, really love this. I'm so happy with my purchase. During the day, Killer Oud, Death by Oud. Oh, so good. Then I switched it up. I'm rocking nice and fresh. Uh, made some dinner, and dinner and a movie for me and my wife. A um, little cuddling on the couch kind of thing, so I figured I'd wear something that I know for a fact she really enjoys and uh aqua de jo i messed with her a little bit i said you know ladies your age love this fragrance you know um because she's a she's a young lady from the 90s so it's a it's a nostalgia pick for those that weren't little kids in the 90s basically and timeless classic even though i love all of the flankers more i still respect this fragrance i still love the way it smells Still good stuff. My wife's a big fan. Big, big fan. This is some really good stuff. It's never going to get old. It's a timeless classic. Like I said, I would recommend all of its flankers over it. But you can't hate somebody wearing this, in my opinion, because it, it's still that good. Out the shower. Aqua de Joe. Well, that was this week's rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. 
I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What'd you guys wear this week? I'd love to read that in the comments. Um, this reflected that it was a much more cold week. I'm, the next week coming is even colder. I got two nights in a row forecasted with snow. I got days where the low is single digits, which means it's going to be negative single digits. It's going to be the feels like temperature in the evenings, highs in the 20s and stuff. like. I got a lot of cold weather coming, frosty winter weather, winter mix weather. So next week's rotation, probably going to be just as dark, if not darker, probably darker. I'm going to be pulling out some more ouds and stuff like that and tobaccos and these more powerful and pungent fragrances to cut through this cold. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the stuff I wore this past week and give it a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.